So today we're going to be starting a whole new unit on exponents. So this is going to be the introduction to exponents with multiplying with positive exponents. Constant objective is students will be able to evaluate exponents. Language objective is students will be able to write exponential form as an expanded product or extended product. They're going to mean the same thing, but I'm going to be using them um, both. Why am I learning this? Well, it's important for developing equations for real-world problems like finding the area and volume of anything. So, first things first, let's talk about what something in exponential form might look like. It might look something a little like this, okay? First of all, we would read this as 3 to the 4th power. In this case, 3 is the larger number, which we would call the base. And 4 would be the exponent, which would be the smaller um, number at the upper right-hand corner. So here, what this means is the base of 3 is going to be multiplied re repeatedly 4 times. So that's why we have 3 times 3 times 3. Here is what we would call an extended product. Now, if I were to multiply this out, I am evaluating it. So 3, for example... 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 3 is 9, so 9 times 9 is 81. This here represents um, the evaluated answer. Okay? So, let's go ahead and practice rewriting um, exponents as extended products, and then also evaluating it. So again, um, remember that when you're asked to evaluate it, you're basically asked to multiply the entire thing out completely. So in this case, if we have 5 squared, what does this mean? It means my base of 5 is going to be multiplied repeatedly two times. So it's going to look like this. 5 is repeated two times, and we're multiplying, so 5 times 5 is 25. Number 2, what does this mean? My base of 2 is going to be repeatedly multiplied three times. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat 2 three times. So this is going to be one of the most common mistakes. A lot of students are going to think it's, oh, 2 times, um, there's 3 of them, so it's 2 times 3, which they might think it's 6. That is the most common mistake. Now, if I were to actually multiply this out, I'm going to see 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. So 8 is the answer, but the most common mistake, again, is actually going to be 6. So be very careful. Multiply it out if you need to, if you're not sure. Now what about this one? So this one, my base is going to actually be what? Well, here's a suggestion I'm gonna make for you. What you're always gonna do is ask yourself, okay, what's being raised to the second power? Well, it's a negative nine, okay? So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and repeat negative nine two times and then multiply it out. Negative nine times a negative nine is gonna give me a positive, so that's gonna give me a positive 81. Okay, so now what I would like you to do is go ahead and pause the video and try numbers four and five on your own. Okay, so now we're going to go over the answer. So here, five is being, um, what's being raised to the fifth power is going to be a negative three. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat the negative three a total of five times, and then I'm going to have to multiply it out. Here's what I'm going to suggest you do. Pair things up here, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. I'm going to do another set because I know a negative 3 times a negative 3 is 9. So don't feel like you have to go in order. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3, etc. You don't have to. It might be easier to pair them up like this because now I know 9 times 9 is 81. Now all I have to do is 81 times a negative 3. Let's see. Side work. That's going to be negative, don't forget your negative, 243, okay? So, just a friendly reminder, almost forgot, this here is what we would call our extended product, or expanded, you can use either one, it means the same. Now, what about 5? What's being raised to the fourth power? Well, it's at negative 2. So, I'm going to go ahead and write negative 2 a total of 4 times, multiply it out. And again, it's just a matter of saying, okay, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4. So 4 times 4 is going to be a positive 16. So again, a reminder, you writing things out is called the extended product or expanded, whichever way. You're basically extending it out to what it really represents. Okay, okay so now 
I'm just going to show you one more example, and then I'm going to actually have you try number seven. So this, what's being raised to the fourth power? Well, the two-thirds is being raised to the fourth power. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and write two-thirds four times, like so. And so you notice every time we are multiplying, okay? In a case like this, if you write them next to each other, it automatically means multiplication, but if you want to add in the extra multiplication um, symbol, that works um, fine as well. So now I'm just going to multiply, okay? So obviously there's a numerator and there's a denominator. I'm going to multiply numerators first. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 4 is 16. As for the denominator, okay, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 3 is 9, so 9 times 9 is 81. So I'm just going to double check if I can reduce, I can't, so that would actually be my answer. And again, the reason why I chose to multiply things out completely was because I was asked to evaluate it. Okay, if you're asked to evaluate, you want to multiply things out completely. Okay, so on that note, I want to actually go ahead and have you try number seven on your own. Okay, so let's see how well we did. So first I asked myself, what's being raised to the third power? Well, it's a negative three seven. So I'm going to go ahead and write negative three sevenths um, three times. Then you multiply straight across here. You can ask yourself this. Um, a negative times a negative is a positive times a negative is a negative. So let me work, fix this a bit. So my answer is going to be negative. I actually would encourage you to take care of that first before you do anything because sometimes uh, we do lose sight of the negatives and we might forget it. So if you want to, I highly suggest you do that first before you tackle on the actual multiplication. Okay, so here 3 times 3 is 9 times another 3 is going to be a 27. Here, 7 times 7 is 49. 49 times the other 7, let's see what that's going to give. Of course, you want to use your side work. 28 plus 3 is going to be 34. So our answer is going to be negative 27 over 343. Okay. So again, you writing this out is called your extended product. In your instructions, you're going to oft often be asked to write it as an extended product, like it says here. So please make sure you follow instructions. Okay. So now let's go over how we're going to read some of these exponents. Okay. So if your exponent is a 2, there is a special name. We don't say 7 to the second power. It wouldn't be wrong, but a more common way of saying it is actually 7 squared. Okay? Of course, what's being raised to the second power? A 7, so you're going to repeat the 7 two times. Okay, well, what if there's a cubed? Sorry, what if there's a 3? So what's being raised to the third power? Well, of course, you can always read it as 5 to the third power, but a more common way of actually reading it and a better way to phrase it would actually be 5 cubed. Okay? And so again, it just means 5 is being repeated 3 times and you're multiplying. And then here, 3 being raised to the 4th power. Okay? It's actually, you would just say 3 to the 4th power. There's no special way of saying it. Um, there's only a special way of reading squared and cubed. They, they have another name. So what does it mean? It means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. It's, it's repeated four times. Okay, so moving on. So why do we call it squared and why do we call it, call it cubed? Well, if you think about the area of a square and the volume of a cube, this is what's going to happen. When you find the area of a square, well, first of all, we understand squares have the same length and width. So if you were to find the area, you would be doing 5 times 5, which is essentially 5 squared which would give you your 25 units squared. Okay, notice it's squared. Now, what about a cube? Well, finding the volume of a cube, you do length times width times height. So in this case, if it was five, you'd be multiplying five times five times five, which is essentially five cubed. So if you would multiply this all out, you'd actually get 125 units cubed. Another way you can tie it all in is, well, area is um, two-dimensional and that's why it's squared and volume is 
the three-dimensional measurement, and that's why it's cubed. Okay, so again, this would be a five squared, and this would be five cubed, and that's how we come up with squared and cubed. Okay, so now let's talk about the special exponents. These are going to be the ones that are going to be a little bit tricky, and they're going to tr fool some of you, so you have to be very careful. So here, what does this mean? Well, let's remember, what's being raised to the third power? It's actually a four, not a negative four, because if there was a negative four, there would be parentheses around it. Okay, so when there's no parentheses, it's just the number, which in this case would be a 4. So actually, I wouldn't repeat negative 4. I'm only repeating a 4. So what it's going to look like is something like this. You have the negative on the outside, and I'm going to go ahead and repeat the 4 three times. But another way you could read this as is the opposite of 4 cubed. Okay, so if you read this as the opposite of 4 cubed, you have the opposite sign, which is your negative on the outside, and then you go ahead and four, um, cube 4, which would give you negative 64. How do I know this? Well, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 4 is 64, but then of course you have to multiply the negative on the outside, which would give you a ne negative 64. Okay, so what about this one? Again, what's being squared? It's the 6 being squared. It's not negative because it was negative there would be parentheses telling me it's a negative base without those parentheses my base is positive so here I'm going to take the opposite of 6 squared so essentially it's the opposite of 6 squared which means 6 times 6 here 6 times 6 is 36 but we're going to take the opposite of that so it's going to be negative 36 okay so please don't confuse this for negative 4 squared because here what's being squared is actually a negative 4. These parentheses tell us that the base is negative. Okay, so the only way your base is negative is if you have parentheses. If there is no parentheses, your base can't be negative. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and practice a couple more with you. We're going to evaluate, which means we're going to multiply it all out, and we're going to um, evaluate by using extended products. So here, what's being squared? It is a negative 7. How do I know this is a negative 7, not just a positive? Because there's parentheses surrounding it, which tells me my base is negative. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply negative 7 two times. Negative 7 times negative 7 is 49. Okay, next one. What about this one? So you notice this one is slightly different than the one before. This one does not have parentheses. So what exactly is being squared? It's just the 7, okay? Because parentheses would tell me that it's negative, but there isn't any, so my base is actually positive. So what this really means is take the opposite of 7 squared. So you're going to take the opposite, which is that negative sign, and then go ahead and group the 7 squared on the inside. So this would actually be 7 times 7, which is 49, but you have to take the opposite of that, which would give you negative 49. So with that slight difference, actually gives us two completely different answers. 49 is not the same as negative 49. Okay, so now go ahead and um, do a couple more with me, and then I'm going to have you pause the video and try some on your own. Okay, let's do number 10. What is being squared? It's just the 5. Okay, it's not negative, it's just a positive 5. So this is actually the opposite of 5 squared. So again, we're going to keep the opposite sign on the outside, which is that negative. And then we're going to go ahead and group the 5 squared on the inside. 5 times 5 is 25. Taking the opposite of that is going to give us negative 25. Okay, what about number 11? What's being cubed? It's a positive 9. So I'm going to go ahead and take the opposite of 9 cubed, so leaving that opposite on the outside, I'm going to go ahead and do 9 cubed in the group, leaving me with, let's see, 9 times 9 is 81, 81 times 9, that's going to be some side work, I don't know that off the top of my head, 729, okay, um, but again, you have to take the opposite, so that's going to give me negative 729. Number 12, what's being cubed? Well, it's a negative 7. How do I know this one's negative? Because there's parentheses surrounding it, which tells me that my base is negative. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat negative 7 three times. 
7 times 7 is 49 times another 7 is going to give me a 343. So how do I know this is negative? Well, again, I did suggest this, but I didn't actually do it. You want to ask, do the negatives first. A negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, so there's a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. So something that I do is actually I would pair up two negatives because I know it makes a positive. So I keep doing that. If I'm if everything's paired off, I know it's positive. But I, if I have um, an odd amount, then it's going to be negative. And you're going to see that with more practice. Okay, so here, what is being squared? It is a negative eight. So we're going to go ahead and square negative eight. A negative times a negative. Let's see. They can pair it up. That's going to be positive. So it's going to be a positive 64. Okay, what about this? What's being cubed? It is a positive 10. So you're actually going to take the opposite of 10 cubed. So make sure the negative's on the outside and group the 10 cubed in the inside. 10 times 10 times 10 is 100. Sorry, not 100. 10 times 10 is 100, but times another 10 is 1,000. Don't forget that negative, so you're going to get negative 1,000. Last but not least, let's go ahead and try this one. Um, what is being cubed? It is a negative 10. Why? Because these parentheses tell me it's a negative 10. So I'm going to write negative 10 three times. You're going to pair them up here. This doesn't have a pair, so a positive times a negative is going to leave you with a negative 1,000. Okay. So now it says, without evaluating, determine if the product will be positive or negative. Okay. So I don't um, really care to actually evaluate it. I'm not multiplying it out. I'm just going to check, is my answer going to be negative or positive? So for number 16, this reads as the opposite of 7 to the 8th power. So first, you're going to do 7 to the 8th power. I know for a fact it's going to be a positive number. But once we take the opposite of that, it's going to become negative. Okay, what about this problem? What's being raised to the 4th power? It is a negative 10. So I really don't care about the 10. All I'm focusing on is the negatives. So if I have negative 10 being multiplied 4 times, I essentially have 4 negatives. A negative times a negative is a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. So for sure, my answer is going to be positive. What about this one? What's being raised to the seventh power? A negative three. So again, since I'm not asked to evaluate it, I'm just focusing on the negatives. I know that there's going to be a total of seven negatives. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A pair would give me a positive. So that's a positive. Another pair here, that's going to be positive. Here, it's going to be a positive for another pair. So all of these are positives, but guess what? Positive times a negative is a negative. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now notice this number was even, and I got positive. This number was odd, and that gave me a negative. Let's see. Um, see if that carries on the trend for the next few examples you're going to be trying on your own. Okay, what about number 19? First of all, we will read this as the opposite of 8 to the 11th. 8 to the 11th is definitely the positive, but once I take the opposite of it, it's going to be a negative answer. So now go ahead and pause the video and try numbers 20 through 23 on your own. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what you got. Number 20, the answer is going to be negative, okay, because there's an odd amount of negatives, which means you're going to have one that's left out. So positive times a negative is going to give you a negative. Number 21 is going to be negative because you're taking the opposite of 5 to the ninth power. Number 22 is negative because, again, you're taking the opposite of 4 to the 12th power. Number 23 is going to be positive. Why is this one positive? Well, because the, the exponent's even, meaning there's going to be enough to make a pair every single time. So 2, 4, 6, 8. Here's a pair. Pair, 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 all those would be positive. Okay, so writing in exponential form, it's pretty simple. The base is always going to be the number that's being repeated. So since 7 is being repeated, 7 is going to be my base. The exponent is going to basically determine how many times the base was repeated. So in this case, it's to repeat a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's going to be 7 to the 8th power. Okay, so let's try 
number 25. What is your base? Your base is going to be a negative 2 thirds because that's the number that's getting repeated over and over. But what about the exponent? The exponent tells you how many times the numbers get repeated. It's repeating 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 raised to the fourth power. Now, something that I want you to consider is do I need parentheses? Well, let's look at the alternative. If I didn't have parentheses, it would look like this. Okay? What does that look like to you? Well, to me, it looks like the 2 is being raised to the 4th power. It doesn't look like the, the 3 is being raised to the 4th power. So that's already an issue. Then what else? It looks like only 2 thirds is being raised to the 4th power, not the negative. So this would actually be incorrect. So be very careful. If it's a fraction, it needs um, parentheses. If your base is negative, it needs parentheses. Okay. So let's look at number 26. What about this? What number is actually being repeated over and over and over? The answer is 1 half. So again, hopefully you understand um, already that fractions definitely need parentheses. Without them, it looks very misleading. So notice, there's still a negative out here. This means that you're taking the opposite of it. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it on the outside. And let's see, 1 half was repeated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. So I'm going to go ahead and raise it to the 6th power. And there you have it. Okay, so just continue moving on. What if you're asked to multiply? What's going to happen? Take it back to the basics. What does 4 cubed mean? It means 4 is repeated 3 times when we're multiplying it. What does 4 squared mean? It means 4 is repeated 2 times when we're multiplying it. So now, if I wanted to rewrite this using exponential form, that means I'm not going to multiply it out. That would be evaluating it. I'm just going to rewrite this as, hey, look, the base is a 4. That's the number that's being repeated. How many times was it being repeated? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to go ahead and write 4 to the 5th power. That's it. You'd be done by that point. Okay? So basically, you're going to be using extended products to justify your answer. Okay, so let's try one more example. What is First, what is 2 to no, to no power at all? What is that imaginary power? Is it 0 or is it 1? A lot of students are going to think that it's 0 because they don't see a number at all. But if there's a 2 there, that means it appeared once. So you would actually note that it's raised to the first power. Okay. So 2 squared is going to be 2 times 2. 2 to the 4th power means 2 is repeated 4 times. And just like I said, 2 with no exponent at all, by default, it's 2 to the 1st power. So that's just going to be a 2. So here, how many do we have? Well, first of all, let's go ahead and write our base, which is a 2. And figure out how many times it repeats. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'm going to write 2 to the 7th. It's that simple. Okay. So now I would like you to go ahead and pause the video and try numbers 27 and 28. Okay, let's see how well you did. Hopefully you wrote them as an extended product. 2 cubed squared looks like this. 2 cubed looks like that. So all together there's a total of 5 of them. So I'm going to write it as 2 to the 5th power. Okay, number 28. That's 3 squared. And this is going to be 3 to the, by default, 3 to the first, okay, so I'm going to write two, um, three re written two times, and then three written once, so all together, it's going to be three to the third power, because there's three of them, okay, okay, so I'm going to show you two more examples, and then I'm going to have you try some more on your own, so what's going to happen here, what's being raised to the fourth power, a negative two, I know it's negative, because there's parentheses, so I'm going to go ahead and write that four times. Here, what's being raised to the second power? Another negative two, because I know um, it's negative because of the parentheses. So I'm going to rewrite negative two twice. So what is my base? Well, my base is a negative two. That's a number that's repeated over and over. But it's going to be raised to what power? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to go ahead and write it to the sixth power like so. Okay. So what about number 30? What's being raised to the second power? It's 1 half, so I'm going to go ahead and write 1 half twice. What's being raised to the third power? A 1 half, so I'm going to write that 3 times. 
So all together, it was being repeated five times. So I'm going to go ahead and write one half to the fifth. Does it need parentheses? Absolutely. Because again, if I just wrote it like this, it kind of looks as though only one is being raised to the fifth power and not just and not two. But you can clearly see here, two was also repeated five times. So this is not acceptable. Okay. Let's read the instructions here. It says, using extended products, evaluate the following expression. So now, not only are we asked to extend it, we actually are asked to multiply everything out. Okay, so for number 31, what is, what is being squared? Okay, um, it's a one-third, so we're going to write one-third two times. Here, what's being cubed? It's a one-third, so I'm going to go ahead and write that three times. So just to simplify this, I would say one-third was repeated five times, so I would write that as one-third to the fifth. But if they asked me to evaluate this, which they did, I need to multiply it all out. One times one times one times one times one is just one. Okay, here, three times three is nine. Three times three is nine. Nine times nine is 81. 81 times 3, we already did this, but I forgot. So that's going to be 243. So it's going to be 1 over 243 would be your answer evaluated. Okay. What about this? What's being squared? It's a negative 4. And again, I know it's a negative 4 because there's parentheses telling me it's this whole group it's, um, is, a, is the base, which in this case is negative 4. So I'm going to write negative 4 two times. Here, if there is no exponent, again, my default is just 1. So I'm just going to go ahead and write negative 1 fourth once. So in other words, if I wrote this as an exponent, I'm going to write negative 4 to the third. And yes, it would require parentheses because if not, it would look like the opposite of 4 cubed. Okay, so now if we're asked to evaluate this, well, a pair of negatives is going to make a po uh, positive. Positive times negative is negative, so my answer is definitely negative. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is, let's do some side work again, 64. So my answer is going to be negative 64. Okay. So what if we're multiplying with different bases? Like this. Now we're dealing with the base of a 3 and a base of a 4. What should we do first? Well, first of all, we should restructure it so that the threes are together and the fours are together. What allows us to do this is the commutative property. Whenever we're multiplying or adding, we could rearrange the numbers and that won't affect the final outcome of what it, it actually equals. So here, it's gonna be easier now that I can see there's gonna be two threes and three threes. So altogether, there's gonna be a total of five of them. So three is repeated five times. Here there's two and there's five. So a total, there's going to be seven fourths. So I'm going to simplify that to just three to the fifth power and four to the seventh. Notice we use the multiplication to separate them because uh, multiplication, sorry, exponents are repeated multiplication. And that's why we use multiplication, not any other symbol. Let's try that again. Here, again, we're going to regroup them, not regroup them, we're going to restructure it so that the twos are together and the fives are together. Remember, if there is no exponent, by default, there's one of them, so you raise it to the first power. So here, there's three and there's two, so altogether, there's five twos. And for fives, there's four here, there's one here, so there's a total of five. So I'm going to write two to the fifth times five to the fifth. And again, we use a multiplication symbol to separate them. Okay. So now it says using extended products, write the following expression in simplest form with positive exponents. So go ahead and try number 33. Okay, so here is your answer. It's going to be 2 to the 6 times 3 to the 4th. And again, you use community property to reorder them and then use extended products. Okay, what about number 34? Go ahead and pause the video. Let's see, well, let's see how well you did. First, I went ahead and used a commutative property to regroup the sixes together and the eights together. Then I'm gonna use the extended products to see how many of each I have. Leaving me with a six to the third times eight to the fifth. Okay, 
So let's try this again. Go ahead and pause the video and try number 35. So here, numerically, negative 7 is smaller, so we're going to put that one first. Okay, so I paired the negative 7, um, the base of negative 7s together first, using commutative property, and then uh, 5 afterwards. Then I'm just going to use extended products. There's 3 here. Whoops, let me just do this here. There was my first group of three, and then my group of one, and then my group of three, and group of two, so that you can see how I came up with that. So I'll rewrite this as negative seven with parentheses to the fourth power and five to the fifth power. So that's actually going to conclude our lesson for today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, until next time, bye.